welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and let's talk about ARP or also known as Address Resolution Protocol. So it's a method that two devices on an Ethernet segment, let's say two computers or a computer or a router or two routers, it's how they communicate over an Ethernet segment. So over Cat5, over a switch, over a hub, anything like that. So let's say we've got two computers got two computers connected to each other and there could be some type of switch in the middle it doesn't really matter it could be a hub or it could be just a crossover cable so we have computer one over here we've got computer two over there and let's say the two computers the first computer has an IP address of 1.1.1.1 and the second computer has an address of 1.1.1.2 and computer one wants to send a packet over to computer two. Could be a ping packet, could be, uh, actually let's say it's a ping packet. So ping packet right there. So when that packet is created and sent off to computer two, even before it's sent off, computer one has a problem. Computer one has a problem in that it does not know the MAC address of computer 2 and that's how things communicate on an Ethernet segment it's actually by MAC address so a MAC address is a hardware address hardware address that is burned into the network card of each computer or each network interface card so your computer probably has a, a built-in if you're on a laptop has a built-in Ethernet chip and that has a burned in address if you're on a desktop you might have the NIC card which is burned in on the motherboard or it also you might have a separate network card doesn't really matter they all have a separate MAC address and technically these MAC addresses these hardware addresses are unique worldwide okay so the problem is that we know the IP address so we know the IP address but we don't know the MAC address okay so you can think of this packet, before we send off this packet, we need to have two pieces here. So the first piece we need is the IP address, and the second piece we need is the MAC address. We've got this part, and we don't know that part. So the question is, how do we get the MAC address? And that's actually pretty simple. From computer one, computer one's going to do what's called an ARP request. And what this ARP request will have, you can think of this as a packet. And I'm going to move my screen a little bit down here. You can think of it as a packet, and inside this packet is saying, okay, I want to get to 1112. Could you guys give me the MAC address? that matches 1112. And this is, since we don't know who owns this MAC address, we don't know who owns it, we're going to send to what's called the all F's address. So it's going to be an address of FFF, you know, so on and so forth. And that's what's called a broadcast address on an Ethernet segment. So all the computers on this Ethernet segment are going to get it. And then computer two over here, it's going to get slammed by this packet, this ARP request, and it's going to respond back. It's going to say, okay, I have that IP address. Okay, so I've got 1112, and also I've got the MAC address that matches that. So that MAC address. And it's going to make a packet and send it back to computer one. On computer one side, so we've got computer one, it's going to put this address into an ARP table, an ARP cache, just some temporary storage. Ooh. So there's a table, a little bit of memory, and it's a temporary storage, and it says, okay, I've got a MAC address that's bound to this IP address, we'll say MAC1. And you can think of this table as just basically a big Excel spreadsheet. 
And there could be, let's say, another computer there, 1113, and it's got another MAC address. Okay, and it goes on for, could, could go on for a long time. Now, each device has a different amount of memory associated for its ARP table, its ARP cache. And what happens is to prevent this from filling up or to prevent this from having old information, these things are aged out. So if we don't talk to computer two for a while, eventually what will happen to that entry is it will time out. Okay, it will expire. And when it's expired, it's kicked out. Now, it's not really a big deal because if we try to transmit to computer two again, we're going to form another ARP request and then the information is going to put, be put back into the table. Okay, not, not too big of a deal. But normally you send one packet and if you don't talk to that computer again in five minutes, it's gone. Okay. So what's going to happen is as long as the computer has an address and an associated MAC address in its ARP table, it's now able to send pings, it's now able to send a worldwide web request, anything it wants to computer two, and everything will work out fine. So just to recap, what's going to happen is, as we scroll up here, Computer 1 wants to send information to Computer 2. Computer 1 knows the IP address of Computer 2, so it knows that, but it doesn't know the MAC address. It needs to know the MAC address. So what's going to happen is it's going to send an ARP request, and that ARP request is going to contain the destination IP address 1112, and it's going to say whoever owns the MAC address of that IP address, give me a reply. It's going to send this ARP request via an all Fs broadcast, all Fs. So it's going to hit every computer, every device on that segment. Computer 2 is going to get this and it's going to respond back with its own packet, ARP reply. And it's going to say, okay, I've got that IP address that you're looking for and here's the MAC address that I have. It's going to go back flying to computer 1 and this is computer one's ARP table, it's going to cache everything up, and now computer one is able to send to computer two using the MAC address associated to computer two. Thanks for watching.